Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gary with the Fan TV, man. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all the videos. Let's get into today's topic, which is that NFL dropped that Ravens schedule last night. So let's talk about what we find interesting about it, what's not interesting, whatever, you know what I mean? Must win games, all of that. Let's, let's, let's break down the schedule. So um, we're just going to roll through it real quick, 1 through 18, just to tell you the team they're playing. So Texans, week one, Bengals, week two, Colts, week three, Browns, week four, Steelers, week five. Titans week six, Lions week seven, Cardinals week eight, Seattle week nine, uh, week 10, Browns week 11, Bengals week 12, Chargers week 13, by late by week, week 14, Rams week 15, Jags week 16, uh, 49ers week 17, Dolphins week 18, Steelers. All right. So that's the schedule in four, right? Now let's talk about what I find interesting, right? So open up the season at home versus Houston. Great. Love opening up a season at home. It's always feel like a, a good feeling, right? It's like opening day. Um, so, got to beat that Texas team. Week two versus the, re versus the Bengals on the road. Um, that's going. That's an early, early uh, test early in the season. Weeks four through six are on the road, which is interesting. You got the Bengals. Sorry, you got the Browns week four. You got the Steelers week five. Then you got the Titans week six in London. So, technically still is a road game. You know, we did, they're not going to be in Baltimore for that. So, that's interesting. The first three, uh, three out of the five weeks, right, there's going to be AFC North games right off the bat. Um, the Ravens don't typically have AFC North games that early on in the season. Uh, the schedule makers have kind of been putting those division games kind of on the back end as far as the Ravens go and the AFC North goes. So to see three out of the five first games of the year, uh, division games, Ravens are going to have to have a tough test from the jump. All right. Um, week eight Cardinals, which I wasn't really going to talk about, but last night, you know, the... <laughs> These NFL teams are doing like the uh, the social media departments are doing like these fancy things for schedule releases, right? The Chargers did like a um they did it last year, right? Like it was each NFL team as, as like a pop tart, right? It made a pop tart for the Ravens. They had a pop tart with like Old Bay sprinkled on it for you know the Baltimore, the Ravens, and um you know the Maryland just Old Bay kind of joke, right? Um, they had I think Russell Wilson they had him as cream corn, you know how people call Russell Wilson corny, so you know they they had a lot in there, right? The Cardinals did the same thing, but they did it with songs, right? So I believe they had a Wale song called Running Back. Then it had a picture next to it of Lamar Jackson, right? Ravens fans was not happy about this. Um, but listen, listen, this is my take on it real quick. I ain't going to make this whole video about that. But it's just the fact that they was all making jokes, right? Uh, they made jokes about every single team that they was that, that they played. I think they called the Rams, California Girls. So, like, everybody got it. Uh, is the Lamar running back joke old and played out? Yes, of course it is, right? Um it's about three, four years old at this point. So, uh, but it is what it is. I didn't take too much offense to it because they was doing it to everybody. Um, but I will say this, Lamar Jackson, if you saw that, go give him 400 yards, give him three, four touchdowns, show him it ain't no running back talk over here. It's pure quarterback play, right? Um, so the Ravens, I really want the Ravens to win that game because of that. But I don't think nothing to be too offended about or up in arms about. They was giving everybody the jokes. And honestly, that's probably, I guess, the most obvious Ravens, Lamar Jackson joke you can make, right? It is what it is. All right, so next thing that's interesting to me is back-to-back. -back, so Ravens don't play primetime football until week 11. And when they do, uh, they get back-to-back -back, uh, primetime games week 11, week 12. Excuse me, you get the Bengals um, at home, Thursday night football. You get the Chargers week 12, Sunday night football on the road. Late bye week, week 13, which I love. Uh, your first play that first 12 weeks, hopefully stay healthy, get that bye week. Then you get ramped up and charged up for the playoffs. Um, I love it. it. It really is good. And the Ravens have a couple um uh, extended breaks in here, like you know, um, going from Thursday night football to Sunday night football. That's an extended break, kind of for real. Um, and then having a the Bobby right after that. So Ravens gonna have some rest coming up in this part of the schedule, which is good. Um, then back to back prime time games again, week fifteen and week sixteen. Jaguar Sunday night football away. I mean, we just played Jacksonville in Jacksonville last season. So, you know, I would like to see that game kind of reverse to be, be home. But, you know, it is what it is. I mean, we already knew that. You know, we already knew our opponents and where we were going to play in months ago. But still. Um, week 16, San Francisco, Monday Night Football on the road. Christmas Day. All eyes are going to be on this game. I mean, you know, there was rumors about Lamar Jackson going to the 49ers. So now playing the 49ers on Monday Night Football. Um, it's a big deal. So I think that game is going to be very, very interesting. Um, and honestly, at this point in the season, it could be a matchup of two of the, the top teams in each of their conference, right? We know what the 49ers got. We think we know what the Ravens are going to do this year, right? So that really could be a top, top matchup right there. So um, week 17, Dolphins, Redemption Part 3, man. New Year's Eve, 
The Ravens should be 2-0 oh versus the Dolphins in the last couple years. Unfortunately, they're 0-2. Woulda, coulda, shoulda, couldn't save them. Um, we know what happened at Thursday Night Football two years ago. Uh, horrible game. Just um, a game you want to forget, even though the Ravens really were still in it. But just the zero blitz game is really probably what it's going to be known as, honestly. Um, and then last year, up 35-14, to 14, they tried the zero blitz. It wasn't working. It wasn't hitting on nothing. Lamar Jackson was picking them apart, running, passing, doing it all. Rashad Bateman taking a slant with 75 yards to the house. 35-14, dominating them just to blow it all in the fourth quarter. So the Ravens got to beat the Dolphins, man. They have to do it. No more excuses for it. Uh, week 18 Steelers. There's no time on this one just because, uh, you know, those Week 18 games, they like to flex just in case, say, Steelers and the Ravens are fighting for the AFC North. They might flex it to, you know, Sunday Night Football or something like that. So, you know, who knows, right? Um, so, good and bad takeaways from the schedule. Good late bye week. The bad to me, four primetime games is fine, but they don't start to Week 11, and you only get one primetime game at home, and that's Thursday night versus the Bengals. The other three are on the road. So, you know, it is what it is with that. Uh, like I said, week four to six will be interesting because they're on the road. The Ravens, they haven't really that that would be an interesting test for the Ravens, how they deal being away, away from home for almost a month. Um, as far as playing playing home games, that'd be interesting. Um, I don't know if I brought it up in the beginning because I've, I've been recording this video like three times because it's something keeps happening. But anyway, <laughs> um, but three out of the first five games of the year are AFC North games, and we typically don't see that for the Ravens, right? The schedule makers usually put these AFC North games more to the middle back half of the schedule. Uh, you build up your record versus non, you know, non-division opponents. Then you go into the, that that division play. That's kind of how it's been the last couple of years. But this year, they're not doing that. You know, three out of the five first games, division. So the Ravens are going to know where they stand in the division very, very early on. So that should be interesting, man. Very, very interesting. Now, this is the thing I want to talk about right here. Must win games on this schedule, right? And when I say that, you might look at me crazy. Texans, Colts, Titans, Cardinals, Rams. Now, those are must-wins because people say, well, those, those are bad teams in your schedule that you're supposed to be them. And that's why they're must-win games, right? Because if you know anything about the Ravens, if you've been a Ravens fan for just one year, right? But I've been way longer than that. So the Ravens play down to the level of their competition consistently. It's been a thing probably before since Brian Billick was here, okay? So it doesn't really matter about John Harbaugh or Brian Billick. It's been a thing forever, all right? Think about this last year. Broncos game shouldn't have been a shouldn't have been a hell game. It was uh Panthers game. Super close and it shouldn't have been. Right? So that's why I'm looking at the Titans, Colts. Excuse me, Titans, Colts, Texans, Cardinals, Rams. Because these are teams that aren't projected to be that good. All right. Texans, number one in overall pick. You get to welcome into the league week one. Handle your business. Colts. Uh they could be starting Anthony Richardson by that time. I think that's what week three or something like that. So they could be starting him by that time. Who knows? Uh, there's talk that they don't plan on setting them a week one, uh, week uh, year one. I should say they don't plan on setting them. They plan on giving them that run out there, giving them a chance to play. Cool. Need to win that game. Uh, Titans, same thing. Um, even if it's Tannehill, their team isn't that talented. They have a decent defense. They really do, but offensively, they shouldn't be doing too much. We'll see what Derrick Henry's. You know, we'll see what he's still on, but they gotta win that game. Cardinals. Um, they don't. They, they, they probably won't have. They won't have Kyler Murray by that time. That's week eight. He'll still probably be recovering from his ACL injury from last year. Um, they're projected. I think the odds makers have them as the the top team. The top team projected to get the number one pick in the draft. Right. So they're projected to be a bad team next season. Now we'll see what happens. Right. There's always see the surprise. You know, you know the Jaguars surprised a lot of people last year. Was a really good team. Uh, but the Cardinals without their number one quarterback, I don't see them being that team. You have got to win that game. Right. And then the Rams, the Rams uh, roster is very, very interesting. They have, like, still have, your, you know, your brand names, your Cooper Cup, your Matthew Stafford, your Aaron Donalds. But when you start looking through the team, that's kind of really it. Like, they, they're kind of a bare bones operation right now just because they traded all the draft picks. They couldn't sign all the players. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, they did a lot to win the Super Bowl, and they got that dub. So I never really criticized the Rams for getting a Super Bowl. They got it. But this is the kind of repercussions on the back end of it. So um, the Ravens got to win those games, right? When I look at the schedule, I always count uh, three three division losses. So that's three losses right there. So we're talking about three three in the division. I always, that's just how I count it because the division is so unpredictable. But I don't think the Ravens have a losing record, and I don't think the Ravens are going to go five and one in the division. So I just say three and three, call it even. That's three losses right there, right? Um, then you still got on your schedule good teams. So you still got 
Lions, you still got uh, Dolphins, you still got Jags, you still got Chargers, right? Oh, 49ers, can't forget them, right? So I look at the schedule, I say, okay, 49ers game could be a loss, and then I think they're going to beat the Jags, I think they're going to beat the Dolphins again. I mean, not again, but for the first time. Uh, then Lions and Seahawks could be interesting, right? Could lose those games. So um, for me, I think the Ravens are going to finish around 12 and 5 this year. That's my prediction on around 12 and 5. Um, at minimum, they'll get 10 wins, right? Unless something goes wrong, cash off your injuries, you know, cross your fingers, that doesn't happen. Pray, pray, please, pray that doesn't happen. They'll at least get 10 wins. So, um, and then I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep bringing it up. There's Texans, Colts, Titans, Cardinals, Rams. They need to go 5-0 and right there. But knowing the Ravens, they will probably lose one of them games and maybe two. They, they, they might lose one of them games right there. If they lose one of those games, that's going to really, really hurt the record because those are games that, that they need to win. So when I'm looking at the schedule, I'm seeing 11-6. and I'm seeing 12-5. Um, and That's my prediction or just because of how the Ravens play against teams that they should beat. Um, one of those five games, I just feel like they're going to drop it. I, hey, man, it's just it's just going up, seeing this team, that's how they go, bro. The games you did, they should win, they drop. I mean, we saw last year, we saw all the blown leads, right? Jaguars game, they should have won. We talked about the Dolphins game, should have won. So one of these games that they should have won, they might not. Giants game, another one that comes to my mind, should have won. So that's where I'm at with it. 11-6, and 12-5. and five. If everything breaks right, they play up to full potential, 13 13 wins. I don't think they're going to go 14 and 3, 15 and 2. I don't I don't think that, but um 11 to 13 wins is how I'm feeling. Uh more so 12. Right. That's that, that's that's what I'm calling it that. So, give me your thoughts on the schedule, man. Give me your record prediction for the Ravens this upcoming season in the comments, man. We'll talk about it there. It's Gabe Roof, another fan TV. I'm out.